William Lai is elected president of Taiwan. The CCP hates him. But will they make good on their threats of war? Welcome to China Uncensored. I'm Chris Chappell. 2024 is a big year for elections all around the world. Perhaps none with bigger consequences than Lay's potato chip flavor contest. Remember to vote, everyone. Otherwise, we could wind up with bubble gum and blue cheese as the winner. Yuck. But the first big election of this year was Taiwan's. On January 13th, Taiwan held two elections, the legislative election and the presidential election, to replace current president Tsai Ing-wen. And boy, was it a major blow to the Chinese Communist Party. Participation was high. Some 19 and a half million Taiwanese were eligible to vote, and more than 14 million cast their ballots, putting turnout at just over 71%. Imagine a democracy where people actually vote. America, take note. Current Taiwanese Vice President Lai Jingde, also known as William Lai, and his running mate Xiaobi Kim, Taiwan's former representative to the U.S., won the presidential election, and they won it pretty soundly. As part of the Democratic Progressive Party, or DPP, the party currently in power, Lai earned 40% of the vote. The rest of the vote was split between his rivals, Hou Yuyi in the Kuomintang Party, or KMT, and Ko Wenjie in the Taiwan People's Party, or TPP. Lai's election means a third term in a row for the DPP, which is quite something. No party has won three terms in a row since Taiwan started electing its leaders by popular vote. Lai won't come into office until May 20th, but his election is already driving the CCP mad. And not just because they still consider Taiwan a part of China, and they're holding a popular vote election. Actual democracy in China? That won't do it all. You see, like current Taiwanese President Tsai Ing-wen, Lai staunchly opposes Chinese aggression. On the campaign trail, he said Taiwan is already a sovereign, independent country called the Republic of China. It is not part of the People's Republic of China, which is true. And what's more, the Republic of China has never been part of the People's Republic of China. But that's a reality the Chinese Communist Party is prepared to accept. Chinese officials have repeatedly slammed Lai, calling him a troublemaker through and through, as well as a destroyer of cross-strait peace and the potential creator of a dangerous war. Says an authoritarian regime that constantly threatens to attack Taiwan with missiles? Chinese state-run media have tried to downplay Lai's victory, pointing out how the DPP lost the parliamentary majority it held for the past eight years, claiming only 51 seats out of 113. According to the CCP's Taiwan Affairs Office, the results reveal that the DPP cannot represent the mainstream public opinion on the island. Hmm, I didn't know their Taiwan Affairs Office was located in a copium den. It's pretty clear that the CCP feels threatened by Lai, which makes sense, since his election shows that Taiwan will continue defying the CCP. Lai has pledged to continue the policies of his predecessor Tsai Ing-wen who built up the military and strengthened ties with the United States and other sympathetic countries. This goes completely against the CCP, which wants to see quote-unquote reunification with Taiwan, and hasn't renounced the use of force for that end. Essentially, this is who China was really hoping would win the election. But instead, the Taiwanese chose democracy, again, despite Chinese disinformation and interference. So why does China want to conquer Taiwan so badly? I'll get to that in a moment, but first, when it comes to the news, you want to make sure you're getting all the news from multiple perspectives, like when it comes to the Taiwanese elections. There's a lot of different perspectives about William Lai, as well as how the Chinese Communist Party is likely to react to him becoming president. That's why I use ground news to see how Taiwan politics are being covered across the political spectrum. Ground news shows more than 100 articles from all over the world. This story on the candidate who champions autonomy from China winning the elections got my attention. More than 250 articles were published on it. Interestingly, it was evenly covered across the political spectrum, unlike this story on U.S. relations with China being tested with Taiwan's new elections. They received absolutely no right-wing coverage, making it a blind spot. It's fascinating to see how the narrative differs depending on the source. Look at these left-leaning headlines. The Inquirer, based out of the Philippines, says Taiwan's favorite wins the election with a glare from China, while The Independent, based out of the UK, headlines the story as sending a defiant message to China. This kind of context is why I use ground news, to see how topics are being covered by sources around the world, including some that support Taipei's worldview and others that support Beijing's worldview. 
Ground News is on a mission to hold the media accountable and provide context so we can see how media narratives can easily shape public opinion. It's a great place to go if you want to be more informed than the average newsreader and find multiple perspectives that you might otherwise have missed. And it's also just really interesting to see all the hidden biases in the media. And that's why we're working with Ground News to sponsor this video, because we believe what they're doing is important. So sign up at ground.news slash China or through my link below to get 30% off the Vantage Level subscription for unlimited access. Do it now because this offer is only good for a short while. The link is in the description. So why does China want Taiwan so badly? Well, control over Taiwan would allow the CCP to exert more control, not just into the Asia Pacific, but over the world economy, since so much trade relies on the Taiwan Strait and Taiwanese technology. But it's not just that. Taiwan's very existence is a kick in the pants to the CCP. Taiwan shows how ethnically Chinese people can have a functioning democratic society and how Chinese people don't need the Chinese Communist Party to thrive. Then again, the CCP does a pretty good job all by itself proving that no one needs the CCP. In this way, Taiwan shares values with the US, although their approach to democracy is a little bit different. First of all, people actually vote. But here's another example. Here's a campaign ad for Lai. And here's one for Donald Trump. Here's a question for you. Just how far are the radical left and inside the Beltway bandits willing to go to stop him? We all know they hate him, so like a pack of rabid wolves, they attack. But here's the thing, he'll never blink. And it's why he's our president. I'm Donald J. Trump, and I approve this message. I rest my case. All of this massively undermines the CCP's legitimacy. This explains why China's been censoring the Taiwanese election, going so far as to block the hashtag Taiwan Frozen Garlic since the term for frozen garlic sounds similar to the words for get elected. They're trying to get rid of garlic. Xi Jinping has officially reached Dracula levels of evil. So what is the Chinese Communist Party doing about it? Well, we haven't even gotten through the first week since the election, and already we're seeing China act up. 2024 is going to be a fun year. I'll tell you more after the break. Welcome back. China's upset that its least favorite Taiwanese presidential candidate won the election. Will China invade Taiwan in response? Probably not in the foreseeable future, despite all the threats leading up to the election. As I've mentioned in previous episodes, China would prefer not to invade Taiwan. And it's in no position to do so thanks to its disastrous economy, incompetent and corrupt military, and other domestic troubles. But this doesn't mean China will stop using intimidation tactics. Leading up to the Taiwanese election, China harassed Taiwan with fighter jets, spy balloons, and disinformation campaigns. Gee, I wonder why Taiwanese showed up in record numbers to vote. On top of all that, China has imposed tariffs on some chemical imports from Taiwan. Now that Lai has been elected, China is preparing to ramp up its bullying. Chinese Foreign Minister Wang Yi, who was on an African tour at the time of the Taiwan election, warned the world that the Taiwanese election results can't change the fact that Taiwan is part of China. Well, I had no idea African nations allowed foreigners to travel with such large quantities of copium. The CCP even lashes out at anyone who says congratulations. China's diplomats around the world have condemned foreign governments like the US, UK, France, and Japan for doing so. They warned that saying congratulations is sending a seriously incorrect signal and disrupting peace and stability. Really? The only time congratulating someone is disturbing peace and stability is if you do it at a gender reveal party. Don't enable these maniacs. Meanwhile, the Chinese ambassador to Australia, Xiao Qian, even issued a threat warning that if Australia is tied to the chariot of Taiwan separatist forces, the Australian people would be pushed over the edge of an abyss. Someone's been watching 300. This is for sure how the CCP sees itself. Insane threats like that should make it obvious that China's the real disruptor of peace and stability. 
And speaking of disrupting peace and stability, it would seem that China, already anticipating a loss, has been making international moves to degrade Taiwan. Shortly after Taiwan's election results came out, one of the few nations that recognized Taiwan, Nauru, cut diplomatic ties with Taiwan in favor of China. In case you don't know, Nauru is a microstate in the Pacific. Despite having fewer than 13,000 citizens, it was one of the few nations that helped give Taiwan an international voice. That is, until its president took to Facebook and announced the change. They ended their relationship on Facebook? What is this, 2008? Nauru and Taiwan are no longer Facebook official. Now, Nauru no longer recognizes Taiwan as a separate country, but rather as an inalienable part of China's territory and will sever diplomatic relations with Taiwan and no longer develop any official relations or official exchanges with Taiwan. Brr, that's colder than the U.S. East Coast right now. Following this announcement, Taiwan in turn said it was ending diplomatic relations with Nauru, saying the timing is China's retaliation against Taiwan's democratic elections and a direct challenge to the international order at large. Now, this isn't the first time Nauru has turned its back on Taiwan. Nauru had relations with Taiwan between 1980 and 2002, then with China from 2002 to 2005, then back to Taiwan from 2005 up until this year. I haven't seen a will-they-won't-they they wind up together this tumultuous since Brad Pitt and Jennifer Aniston. What's Taiwan's and Nauru's celebrity couple name? Tairu? Narwan? So, why the sudden switch? Well, as recently as October last year, Nauru's then-president, Russ Joseph Kuhn, visited Taiwan to meet with current Taiwanese president, Tsai Ing-wen. At the time, Kuhn said Nauru regards Taiwan as kin, standing firmly in our support and laboring hand-in-hand -hand to advance democracy, freedom, peace, sustainability, stability, and economic growth in our region. But then, just weeks after returning home, Kuhn was ousted via a no-confidence motion and replaced by the current Nauru president. Huh. Kuhn's ouster came at a really convenient time. So did Nauru's switcheroo. Could Chinese money have played a role? Given the pattern we've seen in other countries, like the Solomon Islands, I think the better question is how much Chinese money played a role. According to an anonymous senior Taiwan official speaking with Reuters, China offered Nauru $100 million a year, which would almost double the country's GDP. Maybe China's economy would be doing better if all their cash didn't go into buying friends. Now, Taiwan has just 12 diplomatic relations that recognize it as an independent country. And don't be surprised if China starts escalating things later this year with military drills. Even if the CCP isn't ready to invade, it has to save face. This is all the more reason why people need to stand by Taiwan and not appease China. Because working with China will just lead to ruin and leave a worse taste in your mouth than bubblegum and blue cheese lays. Yuck. The way people are sacrificing Taiwan should be shocking. But people have been sacrificing each other since ancient times. And I've got a video I want to show you about that. But first, check out this episode's sponsor, Ground News. Ground News is a great tool to help you stay well informed about what's happening in the world and how it's being covered by all sides of the political spectrum. Check it out at ground.news slash China or click the link below. And here's that video I want to show you from my new show, Deep Thoughts While Gaming, where I hide controversial topics in gaming content. This one is about why civilizations always seem to resort to human sacrifice, according to The Sims. Once again, I'm Chris Chappell. See you next time.